Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about osteogain. So it's something that our group in Bern, Switzerland has really uh, focused on developing. We've done a lot of work on this topic, there's no question. And it's a next generation enamel matrix proteins and it was a collaboration that we had, of course, with Stroman um, over several years to develop it. It is, in 2020, it's basically ready to go. So you can see here from this photo, there's the endogain, there's the osteogain. It's got the packaging, it's been ready for some time. Um, the ability to release it is really dependent, of course, on the FDA. But I wanna talk about the research that led up to its development. Um, you'll notice here, endogain is a gel, osteogain is a liquid. And it has to do with previous work that our group did that showed that gels do not absorb properly to bone grafts. Actually, liquids absorb uh, better. So in a study that compared both the gel, so enamel matrix derivative gel, so endogain versus enamel matrix derivative liquid, which is osteogain, um, these were the early studies in 2015 looking at the difference between EMD liquid, and you can see the surface versus gel. And what I can tell you is that when a gel is applied to a biomaterial, if this is a biomaterial, the gel is always going to be coated on the surface. And then the proteins that are found all in this gel are not going to be on the bone grafting material surface. They're actually going to be located a little bit everywhere. And the problem with that is, of course, is when we want to grow bone, we want it to grow right against the bone graft. Okay. But when there's a gel, those proteins are a little bit everywhere and they're not, they're not um, right on the root surface. Or on, the, um, or on the bone grafting material surface. So in these papers, first thing that was done was we compared um, the absorption to a natural bone mineral, so that's BioWAS, endogain liquid. In the liquid, you can see all these little dots here. They're all very, very close to the root surface. With the gel, all the dots are found a little bit everywhere. They're scattered. Okay, and what that means is that the protein is a little bit everywhere and it's not right on the root surface where you'd like it or on the bone grafting material surface, I should say. Now, when we look at the absorption over time, these experiments, what they do is they look at the percentage of amelogenin absorption. So here we have 80% absorption. And then over time from zero days all the way up to 10 days, how much absorption is there? And here's uh, endogain liquid at the top. Here's the gel at the bottom, which is a lot worse. Okay, and just to put this very simply, okay, in simple terms, if I had a liquid here or I had a gel, the ability of the liquid is that all those proteins get really, you know, suck inside the actual bone graft, okay, whereas the gel forms that outer surface, and then the proteins are a little bit everywhere. The biggest difference between the two is that, um, of course, whenever we talk about the average distance of gold labeling from the material surface, that's this distance right here. Okay, so basically, on whether it be BioWAS, Allograft, or a synthetic material, the distance of the particle is right on the root surface, so it's very, very close. When you have the gel, it's very, very far. So the average distance is, you know, very far away from that actual material surface. Okay, when you look at both of these, whenever you take the top one and you see the little shaking here, basically when that bone graft that has osteogain on it, goes a little bit everywhere, it's gonna stay nice and absorbed. When I look at the gel, when you place the gel into an environment where there's fluid, you know, there's saliva, body fluids, uh, there's lots of activity going on and the gel just basically washes away. And that's where you have a lot of loss of the absorbed endogain, okay? And I remember the day that we actually presented this data to uh, Stroman and we said, look, you know, we've been doing some research on endogain, coating it on bone grafts for a couple of years now. We've noticed more recently that the absorption is not very, very good here when it comes to absorbing it on a bone grafting material and can probably be improved. And that's where the liquid formulation came into play and they named that osteogain, okay? So we've done some studies, like I said, looking at its ability to make bone. And of course you can read these papers down here. Um, the ones that are most interesting were the ones right before FDA clearance. Of course, they need to show high evidence uh, in an animal model. So we did this study in monkeys, and this was done with uh, Dr. Yoshi Shirakata. And uh, in Japan, they have this great monkey facility. And here what we did was we took endogain, coated it on the collagen sponge, versus osteogain, coated it on the collagen sponge. And then we go into these defects, and we create in these animals two wall defects. So we actually remove teeth create defects, and we actually wrap ligatures, okay? And these ligatures are wrapped around these teeth, and this will accumulate a lot of plaque. Um, and then after this is done, of course, 
Uh, we use the animal in several places. So here's the maxilla, uh, as well as furcation defects. In the furcations, we place impression material. Okay, so the impression material is placed in there and this accumulates a ton of plaque as well. And then after a period of you know, three months, we go back in, we remove uh, the impression material, we remove the ligatures, we clean everything out, and then we regenerate the tissues. And that's done with either you know, just control collagen sponge or with endogain or with osteogain. And of course, in these studies, one thing that I can tell you that's very clinically relevant, when you coat endogain itself onto a collagen biomaterial, such as a collagen sponge, you'll notice that you have much better absorption here, okay? Still not as good as osteogain, but it's much better than it was with the BioOS, of course. So if you're gonna use endogain, make sure you have a biomaterial that has collagen, and ideally, like I said, a collagen sponge works well there. And in the study, like I said, we had better new attachment with the osteogain. So that was all published uh, in the journal Clinical Perio by uh, Yoshi Shirakata. So like I said today, that's what osteogain is. There's a lot of data on it now. I think we have 12 or so publications. And you basically mix it with a bone graft. Of course, with the liquid, it works a little bit better, easier to do, uh, better packing, and basically ready, ready for use. If anybody wants to learn more about this, of course, uh, we teach this course in, uh, in Florida. So every year, Tony Schoolian comes from Switzerland down to Florida, and we teach a course how to use this and do some of the grafting techniques if people are interested, okay? So that's everything. Like I said, our facility, uh, we do this course at Nova Southeastern University where we record all the surgical steps that are done, and then these are broadcasted to all the different cameras, et cetera. And so for those that want to learn how to use endogain, osteogain, and do some of these procedures, like I said, I highly recommend um, coming down to Florida sometime and taking one of these courses. Thank you.